have some fun, you know. Hey man, I I feel you. You still you kept with the sun the sun theme, and I'm not looking at my list, and I don't know how much sun I got. <laughs> you know, I was looking at mine, and that actually seemed to be that seemed to be one of the things that drove me to choosing some of these options, uh, especially. For- wander our way over you know because this is wandering ways what's bigfoot possibility this was more fun clink clink Uh, Uh, another week another blessing another just awesome time to sit down here and talk about our wonderful, wonderful nature podcast, because this is Wandering Ways, the wandering podcast, not just a wandering podcast, but the the wandering in nature podcast, Wandering Ways. Here we are, the Nature Podcast 101 with the Reverend Mark. How are you today? <laughs> Perfect and getting better, my man. What's up? It's been, you know, a week <laughs> since so. we chit-chatted, because it's always a week since we've chit-chatted. Exactly. Uh, our wanderers are doing fine. Yeah. What you, what's up? Have you done anything cool lately? Me, you know, I'm trying to save up for a house. So I've been like living that hermit life of like, I go to work and then home, work and then home. Don't, you know, don't stop for lunch. Don't stop for dinner. You know, I eat at home, keep, you know, keeping the money down. Uh, Cause I want to buy a house cause I'm tired of renting. <laughs> <clears throat> Fair. Fair, fair. But that's kind of a bummer because uh, I haven't really done shit any either. I've uh, I'm in the thick of business or work, so my uh, my life is work, work, work. Well, I think last time because last time we talked, um, we talked about um, what did we talk about last week? We didn't talk about my, I went to Yellowstone. See, that's what I mean. I think we're, we were going to talk a little bit about me going into Yellowstone. Uh, went in, uh, went we, in with the, uh, you know, we saw some wildlife as always. Oh, we're good then. We're good then. Yeah, we did. You saw the wolves. I was jealous. Yada, yada. Everyone's heard the story. Exactly. Winter in Yellowstone, fucking immaculate. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the grizzly bears are starting to come out, you know, March uh, 15th, I believe they saw the first one. Yeah, I saw that they were starting to poke out, which is exciting. Uh, although I don't know if that's, do you know the normal, is it normal for them to start coming out this time of year or are we early? You know? Early-ish, um, just because it was a lighter winter, it's making sense. Last year, I think there was a bear that came out in like February, like before COVID hit. I remember it being like a big thing, like, oh, bear, there's a bear that's out and doing its thing. Um, but I actually, I find it interesting because the springtime in Yellowstone is the time I've personally seen the most bears. Um, you know, you see, they just woke up, man. You ever woken up from a nap? What's the first thing you do? You go, you're crazy. You got all this energy. (laughs) They just took like a, like a big old nap. First thing I'm doing is like, let's party. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) No, I mean, I get it. I mean, bears are bears are really cool. Uh, they're they're cool animals. Uh, those two cubs I saw, you know, I'm looking at getting pictures done for my for my next house. You know, where am I going to hang up pictures? What pictures I want to hang up? You know, the bears are one of them because um, they're just cool experiences. You know, when you have those, um, but it's always kind of that early summer, spring, right when they open up the Bear Tooth Pass. You know, I saw a grizzly bear up there multiple times, hundreds of times, not hundreds of times, lots of times. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> No, it's an exciting time. Getting them, uh, spring is in the air. Yeah. Although this will be coming out. April-ish. Yeah, April. So spring has yeah. been Still in happens. the air for <laughs> a little bit. But the nice thing is the weather's starting to get warm and it's time to go outside more. I get it. Some people really love the snow, but I love the sun. Because I get tan, and when I get tan, I look really good. I get all that vitamin D, so my mood is elevated. Like, oh, big living when the sun comes out. So you got I'm that. looking forward to it. You got that radio slash podcast tan going. 
that right now you know yeah. you're, in the room, you're like i need that sun I, oh. need <laughs> I was looking at uh pictures from uh your bachelor party then like i was dark back then i was like oh, where are you tan mark where are you <laughs> right no i uh i love i used to actually like go tanning because i I look good tan because I have that Native American in me. And it really brings out my dark skin. And my, uh, I, so like in the winter, I would go tan because I, I just looked good and I liked it. Um, but I stopped and then, uh, and then summer comes on. Josh gets real dark, my brother. Um, he gets dark. Ain't no shame. I've thought about going tan because I love how much I look when I'm tan. So I've hundred percent, hundred percent. I've thought really hard about it. <laughs> well, I've, I've done it. So I go for it. Make it happen. <laughs> it's just like, it sucks. Cause you're just like, I'm spending money to like sit in a machine that's just spraying light at me. Cause I want to like look a certain way, which goes against a lot of principles for people. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I I, I, exactly. But along those lines, I really like kind of how you're segueing. Into me being tan because I'm amazing? <laughs> well, just getting outside and getting into nature because I think like, you know, one of those things, it's, 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 what are we going to do? We're going to go whitewater rafting. We're going to go hike this trail. We're going to fly here and do this. We're going to you know, go on this adventure and accomplish whatever. And I honestly, I'm, I'm super stoked. I, I like what we have going for us. I like what you listeners, uh, the questions you guys have asked us and along the ways, you know, I get a lot of questions about my Jeep, uh, you know, follow the Rougarou. I give, give out all sorts of like help, how to videos, um, and whatnot on there, as well as our nature videos and the, what we talk about, you know, we talk about like the albino redwood tree down in the redwoods. We talk about the medicine wheel and its importance to the native peoples up in the Bighorn Mountains um, and many of the other places we go and the importance of them and being a good steward in, in these places. So I'm excited for what we have this summer coming for you guys, as always, you know, because we love being outside. We're going to push it. We're going to push ourselves because it's what we enjoy and we're just sharing with you guys that enjoyment and we appreciate yeah it. that and uh i i got a lot more time in the summer so <laughs> uh, you know i'm gonna be trying to hit as much as i can whether it's a big old bike ride uh like i'm talking 50 100 mile bike ride or if i'm just gonna go skate on over to uh crater lake or even last in national park because i didn't realize how close i am to that so There'll be tons of stuff because I'm in a new area and looking to explore. So this summer, I don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> right. But I think summer 2021 is going to be pretty legit. I'm excited too because, you know, like we've talked about, just go fucking do it. Just buy the ticket, buy book the Airbnb, book the fucking whale watching cruise as you know we you heard last week with Vin or you know when we talked with Vince you know going on whale watching cruises all of that you know make it happen I I I, I can't stress that enough you know we we sit in our boxes we talk in our boxes we hold our boxes but let's get out in this round world this circular world and go experience it hey not everybody thinks it's circle some people think it's flat you know, and, and, and I'm not going to, because it's a great episode, I'm not really going to argue that, but, <laughs> but my thing is, is I, I trust you because you're an expert in sports medicine. So whenever I have a sports medicine question, I ask you, people talk to me about marketing Native American stuff because I'm an expert in my field and I know what the fuck I'm talking about. If doctors and scientists have to go to school for years and years and years and learn and do the things they do just to understand, you know, our world and what goes on in it. I'm going to trust their opinions. <laughs> so until I'm told otherwise. Well, is it, have you seen the, like, I think it's Buzz Aldrin. Cause I, I think Buzz Aldrin was one of the original astronauts who went to the moon. Yeah. Um, I, I know I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure there's a video out there of him punching a flat earther, <laughs> like straight in the face. You should. Cause 
what what I've understood with with people who argue things that you can prove, right? Like, like they're going to argue. You 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 saw that a lot during this last election cycle. You know, both sides were throwing out articles that were just fucking wrong and. You know, all it was was the one line that they used for the article headline that was in the paragraph that that they're reading, you know, because like I had some guy that was, you know, he was talking about how gas prices have gone up and how we, you know, we can't all afford Teslas, but he's, he's thrown out ridiculous numbers and it's like, no, Teslas are becoming more and more affordable. The Cybertruck is going to be comparable to the F-150 in both, you know, performance and price and part of that to me is like well like you're competing with your competitor like it's a it's affordable at that point and it's not some high-end luxury thing and we don't think that way and we need to brought before we speak we need to think yeah yeah (laughs) we need more thinkers in the world but now anyways back to summer because summer is always exciting um sun's out Markets tan, new adventures, but it kind of lets us jump into, oh yeah, yeah, your birthday's up, but it leads us into something that we're going to talk about today. It's another one of our fabulous top five lists. I know uh, we've had a lot of positive feedback with it, so we're going to keep it rolling. Um, Anyways, this time, because we're hopeful and wanting new exciting adventures, we're going to give you our The Wandering Ways Top 5 Wish List Adventures. Things that I myself want to go on or Mr. Zach Gray over there wants to go on. So it's it's more of a personal thing, ideas for us. But what we want out of it is maybe you guys get an idea for something or maybe it makes you think about for you to write down your top five list to go out and accomplish them. Or you can tell us about these because we want to know about them because they are our wish list, as well as um, if you guys have any top fives that you want us to do, like you're like, hey, I'm stuck on, you know, deciding, you know, what, what, what outdoor adventure I want to do. You know, what are your guys' top five, you know, um, send it our way we'd love to debate and talk about it and another cool thing about these lists is when you first you know propose the idea to me and we're talking over uh instagram chat and i'm sitting there like oh man i gotta write these down you know i got the note cards right here right as the conversation's happening i was right right now my top five but we haven't discussed this with each other so no. our numbers could line up they might not line up they we don't know <laughs> Yeah, this week is a total surprise to the two of us. I haven't heard his. He has not heard mine. So that's uh, super exciting. I just got the word that I tested negative for COVID, so I'm pretty happy. Woo-woo! I got both shots, so. (laughs) We're, uh, I think that's like 10 weeks in a row for me. Good. 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 (laughs) But anyways, back to... Our top five list, he hasn't heard mine, and I haven't heard his, so we're going to jump into it. Uh, you know, I always start, do you want, or you always start, do you want me to start this time, or should we leave it up to a coin flip, make it more fun, more chance? I'll always go with the coin, if you have a coin on hand. <laughs> I do, actually. That's what That's I'm trying to I, grab right now. Well, I thought got you- a nickel, all right? <laughs> Classic nickel heads. Oh, nickel tails. I'm gonna let you call what you want. If tails. You're right, you get to pick. Tails. Tails. All right, we got heads. <laughs> Prove it. Put it up to camera. Heads there. Um, you go first, my guy. Oh goodness gracious! My number five dream, and and I think the reason. It's my number five. Uh, I mean, all these could, you could inter swap each and every one because they're all dream dream trips I want to do in my lifetime. Uh, But it's the Maldives, the Maldive Islands in the Pacific Ocean, tropical. Um, I really want to take, I really want to plan my honeymoon here with Thea. So that's kind of why it's number five because I'm (laughs) trying to make it happen soon. Um, 
but you're right there. You're in the tropical jungles. You have the beaches, all the just beautiful pictures and stories and images and videos you see from that area. The bungalows right out on the like water that you can stay in. Um, I love it. I love the warmth. I love islands. I love beaches. Um, so I love tropical. So <laughs> sign me up, put me in there. Let's go snorkeling. Let's go um have some fun you know hey man i i feel you you still you kept with the sun the sun theme and i'm not looking at my list and i don't know how much sun i got <laughs> you know i was looking at mine and that actually seemed to be that seemed to be one of the things that drove me to choosing some of these options um especially this one because when when i see beaches beaches to me are relaxing uh and that's what makes, I guess, the Pacific Northwest Coast a little interesting because it, they're not necessarily relaxing beaches because the wind and the rain and the, the various weathers you get up there. But the like Hawaiian beach, the, you know, Baja California beaches, the Florida beaches where it's just like, I'm just going to lay out in the sun and do nothing and have a good time. That's what I want. That's what, yeah. You want that island life. An like island like laid back, chill. I dig it, man. You go relax, oh. kick it. Ain't no, uh, ain't no issues there. No, I mean, I and then just the cool stuff that you got going on, and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> like you know, when I when I was thinking the Maldives, because some of these are interesting in how I lay them out and how I would do the trip, you know. Cause I would also throw in like a Fiji or another, those other islands I have not been to down there. I just have seen a lot from the Maldives that have made me really want to go down there. Um, but all those places are beautiful. Hawaii is beautiful. You know, yeah. that would be another option to do, you know, with you. And, you know, we're talking like future trips to do together. <laughs> I'm on board. Let's, let's go take the trip to Hawaii. Uh, yeah, I would, I would go down. I would love to do Hawaii. Um, I'd like to do some tropical. I'm not going to lie. Like a Bali. That'd be fun. Uh, you know, fun story about Wally is my dad, uh, during the 2010 census, when we were doing the Hawaiian census, we had a makeup, a uh, hair and makeup director on set. And he actually owns a hotel in Bali, like a nice resort. Like, damn. yeah, a uh, Amos is his name. Nice guy. Really nice guy. <laughs> I'm sure, man. I'm sure. I'm sure there's negative people everywhere, you know, but <laughs> I feel like Bali, I think they're pretty nice people. Although... Again, never been there, so I could be full of shit. But, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands over there are growing like unbelievable right now, uh, especially yeah. with the infrastructure and whatnot. So it's awesome to see. Open For sure. Uh, I'm going to jump to my number five. I'm kind of going the other way in the temperature on this one. Um, I want to go up to the Arctic Circle. Oh God, I would love that into the Arctic Circle, because I think it'd be cool to say I've been to the Arctic Circle, and there's also a lot of cool shit up in the Arctic Circle. You know, glaciers are always dope. Um, the animal life is usually pretty dope. I uh, would love to see a wild polar bear. I don't have to go to the Arctic Circle for that, but there's a good chance at the Arctic Circle. <clears throat> uh, you know, I've, I've watched enough Planet Earth documentaries to kind of get excited about the far north. So, yeah. And it's kind of the main reason. I know it's cold and it probably go. I'm not going to get my tan there, but I think it would be pretty legit to go up and uh, get into the Arctic Circle. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, my dad has actually had the privilege to go up there to the Arctic Ocean and um, be in Nome, Alaska and various like villages up there, which I mean, I would love to go, uh, to Yugativik, uh, right up top Alaska, uh, where they have like the polar bear capital of the world where, um, you know, they come into town. There's a good show on, um, Disney plus that, you know, Nat Geo puts on, it's called the Grizzly Gauntlet. Uh, they talk about the different bears in Alaska. They talk about the polar bears up there and you can go see them. And that's just, I mean, yeah, no, that's a, that that would be on my list. I mean, yeah, you asked for five. 
<laughs> I know we we're only doing five because we had to narrow it down. I write all the places I want to go and then I rank them. So I, and I have more than five on my list. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, but yeah, no, Arctic Circle. I think the Arctic Circle would be just absolutely legit to do. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the caribou, the Arctic fox, the yeah. all that, the people, the native people up there, the yeah. culture, the whale culture, all that. Like I straight up know I'd be up there and in the back of my head, I would just be hearing David Attenborough's voice narrating everything I'm doing up there. That's another one of those trips that I really want to do where it's like, you know, I would be okay with like spending a day on a plane to go up there for like three or four, just to be like, you know, I did it. I'm happy I did it. And it was worth my time. Yeah, that'd be a good one to do a short trip up there. I'd want to do, I don't know. I'd want to do like some big hike and then probably, you know, get out. <laughs> <laughs> You we know. figure it out. I mean, we, we're really good at that. You know, um, as you guys have heard some of the adventures we go on, we're really good at changing on the fly. True. Um, so that's why I think we'd be good at this because it would be like, yeah, let's just fly up there and uh, ask around. <laughs> right. Anyways, that's my five. Let's move on to the top four. Number four for Mr. Zach Gray. Number four. So we're going to get rid of the number five is the... Himalayas. Ooh. I want to go to the Himalayan mountains, the tallest mountains wow. in the world. I, I want can't to believe I forgot to put those <laughs> in my top five. <laughs> you might. I want to go to Nepal. I want to go to Bangladesh. I want to go to India. I want to go to Pakistan. I want to go see the the flags. I want to go yeah. see the Tibetan monks. I want to go yeah. see the the farming up on those mountain steeps. Uh, I want to see the stupas up in the mountains. I want to yeah. see the, the churches, the ancient religions, the native peoples, you know? So, uh, so true. The Sherpas, the Everest. <laughs> yeah, I want to see, I want to see it all. I want to right. see, I do, I really want to go to Nepal. Um, I've seen too many pictures, being up in the Himalayas, it's just to be amazing. Um, I'd love to go all the way up to like Everest base camp. Um, I'm not, I don't have to go to the summit because the summit's a little too crowded nowadays. Oh my God. I saw a video on, um, uh, Nat Geo. I've been just watching Nat Geo like crazy guys. Um, but they're, they were talking about, they were looking for like this body of a lost hiker, um, that supposedly summited Everest before, um, the Sir Edmund Hillary. Uh, they think they, he just never came back down. You know, he, he went up, we, he could have summited, but he, he died along the way. They thought they were looking for his body along uh, this hiking way. And just the like, I'm going to hike down here, but the Sherpa's yelling at me not to do that. And like, I'm going to wait, but there's a hundred people going to the summit at once. And like, that's the problem with, with Everest. You could be the best shape, but you're going to die because the people in front of you are just dumb or something happens because they all want to do it and yeah. i got, and, yeah. <laughs> I got kind of a crazy story um not about everest but about k2 which is another peak out there second uh, second tallest mountain in the world arguably the hardest hiking the hike the hardest one to hike to the top it's the deadliest oh uh, yeah that's why yeah so um there's this guy that i follow on instagram um i've talked about him before um, Colin O'Brady, he's mm -hmm. the guy who walked across Antarctica. Super cool. So this winter, he went to K2, and he was going to summit it um, in the winter. They were trying to be, like, the first people to summit it during the winter. Oh, wow. The mother, um, like, um, some other more local native people to the area actually did it before he did. Um, but he was still going to try and summit it because, duh, right? Why not? Yeah, so he's going on his way up, and he reaches a point, and he's like, he's not feeling right, just he wasn't, something's not there, so he decides to head back down. Now, he was up there with a bunch of other people. I think, like, four other people were going up with them. Mm -hmm. All four of those people did not make it back down. Oh, my gosh. Another good book, actually, that 
stems from K2 and this mountain hiker uh, is it's called and we read it in the seventh grade. Uh, it's called Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen. Um, really good book. Uh, they hiked up. You know, he he came actually. What what it is is he was finished down hiking K two, came down into a village, saw the poverty, really wanted to help out. Who's it by? Uh, Greg Mortensen. Um, and they, you know, and it, it spurred, you know, building these schools and these villages. And we actually donated pennies uh, because that's the big thing is donating pennies to them uh, to help pay for this stuff. It was really good. Uh, that's what actually my teacher, she, uh, Mrs. Hickey in the seventh grade, she was really about traveling. She went to India, all that, you know, she talked about the Himalayas and just like the way she described them is she was like, when you're standing out here in Billings and you see the Beartooth Mountains, times it by like three or four. And that's the type of it, kind of feeling you get there. And it's like, God, I just want that. Yeah, that's, that's so, that's exactly what I imagine it would be is like looking at like the mountain range like that, but just like, boom. Yeah. Um, like when you see those pictures of like LA and the mountains in the background of like the city, because they're using like those lenses that zoom shit in and you're just like, like that, but no, that's just want the normal. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, I really want to make it happen. I have a flag of Nepal because I got the flags of the world. And that was one of the flags. I was like, nah, I, I got to keep this thing. It that's just cool. it felt, it felt right to like not get rid of that one. Yeah. Um, I don't that's know if that's the some justice for the. Uh, people of Nepal too. Oh, yeah. So, and Tibet. Um, free Tibet. Yeah. There we go. Free <laughs> Tibet. What's your number four, cowboy? Oh, my number four. <laughs> well, now that the Himalayas have been said and I remember that, it kind of changes my whole spiel because I can't believe I've been dying to get to the to the Himalayas for so flipping. They're just your number six. I'm sorry. Honorable mention. Yeah. <laughs> The number six that's really like number like two or three but right <laughs> yeah we but anyways in my original top five list um i got i'm staying up north and i'm gonna go to denali I oh hit up, goodness gracious I, yeah i want to hit up denali um okay. i've seen too much too many cool pics seen heard too many cool stories um, it's Alaska. I love Alaska. So, I mean, I, I have an athlete I work with. He's from Alaska and he's got like a family cabin that's like right <laughs> next to Denali. And he was telling me all about it. So I'm like, well, shit, I just need to go to Denali now. <laughs> you just need to make best buds with him so you can use that cabin. No. <laughs> <I'm> trying. <laughs> no, I'm not. But it'd be cool. He's a cool guy. But I would, I, Denali, I, I, I want to go to Denali. I hear, I hear that you do want to spend some time um, up there. If you do up there, you want to spend a couple of days. It is a big, big er park. It's not, um, it's not very drivable like some of the lower forty-eight parks. But I, I would be excited to check something like that out. And, and honestly, you know, with a lot of the work we do, you know, for the native peoples of this country and Native Alaskans, you know, anti-drinking, anti-smoking, behavioral health change, you know, do the do the good thing. Um, I'm. I'm interested in, in we do go up to Alaska. We might even be going up to Alaska this fall. Um, and, you know, I'm just gotta, we just gotta go from there. Just take that step. Like, hey, I'm already up here. Take that short flight, make it happen. That's, that's you though. <laughs> that's but you. You could piggyback off that. I wanna go. I wanna go. <laughs> I don't want you to go. Well, I do want you to go. But I want to go. <laughs> you can piggyback off that with me. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, shit. I would love Denali. Exactly. No, I think that would be... I think you could drive from Fairbanks there, right? Yeah. I'm not even sure. I'm not I'm not sure either. But Probably Anchorage, too. There's not many roads in that state. I mean, there are, but they're not, like... There's, like, 12. 14 and a half. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I forget. <laughs> As you're wearing your Bristol Bay, Alaska shirt. You know, yeah, we, man, I got we, this up fishing. This is yeah, my fishing gone, shirt. We've gone to the that the great north a couple times now <laughs> on your list. Yeah, that's the last time for the north. The north. That's the last time for the north on my list. But I like. I, I mean, I, I've heard the wildlife is great up at Denali. Yeah, the, the sights. I mean, 
I would love to, you know, you go July, right? When the, probably the flowers are in peak bloom and, oh, beautiful. beautiful. Top three. Oh. Hello, my wanderers. Before we get going with this episode of the podcast, I do just want to remind you guys to check out our other social medias, the YouTube, the Instagram, the Teespring to get that swag. Make sure to check us out individually. Zach Gray of Quartz Lake, Zach Gray, the Rougarou. Make sure you check out myself, Reverend Marcus, all that fun stuff. The links are below in the bio. Um, all you got to do is click that bio, look for it, and boom, you're on your way. Make sure if you guys want to be part of the podcast or questions to be heard on the podcast, email us at wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com or quartzlakeproductions at gmail.com. We love the feedback. We love the input. All of it is amazing, and we love you guys for listening. It's awesome. So let's keep wandering on. Number three for me is Australia. I would love to go to the outback. I would love to go to the great coral reefs, um, especially the Great Barrier Reef. I would love to go to, uh, you know, Sydney, check it out. Why not? Visit some friends that are down there. If Jean's still down there. <laughs> yeah. Um, all of it. I mean, Australia has always been like, it's been one of those since I was a little kid. Like, I want to go there. Um yeah, Australia would be a lot of fun. Um, Australia would be a lot of fun. My sister studied and lived in Australia for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she loved it. She loved it. My mom went and visited her once. Um, a jealous. Yeah, right? It'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, the way, one thing that always scares the shit out of me about um, Australia is I, everything's trying to kill you down there and and that's what the memes and all the internet stuff says right like there's spiders that'll kill you there's dogs that'll kill you there's kangaroos this even the weather will kill you it's so damn hot like like honestly everything is trying to kill you down there that's why the people only live on the crust you know if you really look at like australia it's like for how big of a cut you know continent country all that it is like the the amount of towns that are inland it's crazy that how the difference yeah and yeah there's a train that goes through it though i believe oh yeah i mean the outback's the outback right yeah go. which would be super cool to get on that train to go cut through oh yeah we'll make it happen we'll get down there we'll make we'll we'll, we'll have the wandering ways down under <laughs> yeah down under edition right the wandering ways down under top three that means i really want to do it yeah <laughs> that's true top three means you really want to do it well really and i want to do it i would want to do it you know you'd want to do it in the winter you know when it's cold up here uh you know because it's, it's hot summer. hot as hell down there oh, it's the summer yeah or do it in the spring when you know be smart about it yeah yeah plan smart you know go snorkeling um all of it i just go on an outback thing go see some kangaroos and go see some koalas go see you know some shit that'll kill you yeah. there's a reason steve Irwin spent like his half his life down there well i think he's from australia too like born well, he didn't want to leave yeah anyways r.i.p steve Irwin. right he was a great he was, he was great. steve Irwin. it was a sad one him and harambe two grades i love that his kids have continued on his legacy i do too they do a great and they do a great job about it they're like basically the same they're so <laughs> so similar they treat it that exact same way like whatever yeah. like you get like crazy they're like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> i love it i do too I mean, animals are cool you can learn a lot from them honestly by just like staring at them and interacting with them and the moments you share you do like you know they're they're they're, they're more than just that animal you know they're, they're they are a being they are a living being this one is different from that one you know they make mistakes you know you, you see animals like oh shit i'm walking with you guys i meant to be walking with you or oh 
we're over here, you know, we want to be doing this, um, you know, oh, I'm going to fly here. Um, I just think they just haven't evolved as our, in mentally as we have, and they will one day. Yeah, 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 no, they will. They will for sure. Anyways, going into my number three, um, if you know me any much, you know that this has gone, this floats in my top three at like all times, but um, it's sitting at number three right now, could easily jump to two or one depending on what, uh, what I watch on TV or what video or picture I see. But it is actually farther south in South America of Patagonia. Oh, good. As I got the Patagonia shirt on. Yeah. Uh, love it. I am. I have been. I want to go to Patagonia so much. They got mountains. They got jungle. They got so much cool shit down there. And it would just be an absolute time of my life to go to Patagonia. Well, that's like when you see the cartoons and all the waterfalls and all the like mountains and how close nature like that's the like actual that's where they got the cre like creative idea from is patagonia yeah like up yeah like up that movie basically is patagonia yeah up's a super sad movie super sad movie i'm okay. trying to learn the up diddle actually on my ukulele it's a good one. I, I did actually a report on it in one of my classes about how the how the opening scene does not use any dialogue, but the story it tells, just the power, the emotion by not using dialogue is just like the communication and visual images. I'm not moment. afraid to say that I cried my <laughs> eyes out during that scene. It's and it's powerful. The tears. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. Well, in it's it's a, there's a reason. It's one of those ones that you wouldn't do that that type of opening scene in a movie if it was humans. I mean, you could, but it would like just imagine like the fact that it's cartoon and the emotion you get is it, the, just the power the raw mm. power it, it 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 holds yep do 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 oh that's that song will bring a tear to your eye because you think of that opening scene <laughs> you bring up i mean you bring up patagonia what i like about it too is um like you, you talk, you do talk about it a lot. You bring it up. Like, I really want to go down there. I really want to make this happen. I, you know, it's, you wish places like you really wish South America was like as far as Mexico in travel. Cause yeah. it is, it is a people don't understand. Yeah. It's right. You know, North America, South America, you know, one, two, but you got to get up and spend some time to get down there. Cause it's a good 16, 17 hours, depending on where you're headed. It's yeah. It's a trek. It's a trek to get into Patagonia, but Damn, dude, it would be so worth it. That's another one of those. So right? worth it. You got to plan it a little bit just because it's so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't want to miss out on any opportunity. Yeah, you didn't. I'd want to try and fit so much, as much as I can into it and just see all of the sights. As, just take camping shit and just... Sign me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that'd be amazing. Amazing. I, I love it. Let's do it. Top three. We got to make these happen, guys. So it requires you to tell your friends to subscribe to this episode and to subscribe to all our episodes that come out because we, we, we appreciate the support. We need the support because we want to give you these trips. We want to bring them to you firsthand. We want to record live in person like we have in the past. We want to be able to bring you things firsthand, you know, on our social medias, you'll be able to watch some of the videos day of week of, you know, of the adventure happening. We're trying to bring that stuff to you. And it honestly, your guys' help, it, it has helped out. We appreciate it already. Just, you know, keep on wandering with us. Keep on wandering for sure. We're going to wander into our top two. Wow. Wish list places we want to go. What do you got? 
you know, and, and like you said, I mean, honestly, like we've said, like our top five can change at any moment. It can, you can rearrange, it depends on the day when you ask me, uh, all that, right? Number two, and going back to another Nat Geo documentary I watched, good old wild Japan. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah, Japan's one up there. And for me, the reason why is I would love to go back and forth to the different spots of Japan, you know, especially, you know, making a home base in Portland to be able to fly in and out of there. Uh, when, when international travel is more normal again, I really want to go to Japan because it really isn't too expensive. And there, it's, it's very Americanized, which is interesting in how Japan, but to me, it's like they, they, they're a little bit smarter than us, you know, and how they build things, how they build their bridges and their communities and how they support one another. And they don't get mad at one another. They're very nice people, you know? Um, but like the variety and diversity of cities, you know, you have the mountain towns, you have the way the culture and the religion is tied into everything. You have the Tokyo, you have Mount Fuji, you have the, you know, the beaches in southern Japan, in the tropical Japan, um, you have the bullet train, um, you have just everything that is similar to the United States, both on a, like, geographical level, in the sense of, like, there's beaches, mountains, that kind of stuff, um, and you can, you can pick the Japan you want to experience, you know, if you want to experience more ocean you want to experience more mountain you want to experience more beachy it's yeah. there the opportunities are there you can go experience the culture the religion the you know the samurai all that the world war ii history it's all there and i mean why not yeah japan would be super cool i would love to go check out the mountains of japan would love to climb mount fuji uh, that would be amazing um, it's ceremonial yeah, for some Japanese, which is awesome to hear and see. That I want to go see because I'm pretty sure Japan's. I think it's Japan. It might not be Japan. Um, that has the like the monkeys that sit in the hot springs. That would be really cool to go see. I, I want to say that's Iceland. No, that's not Iceland. There's no monkeys on Iceland. It might be Japan because there are hot springs in like the mountain areas, and the, I don't. I mean. It's either that or it's like just um, on the main continent from like that area. Oh, to J oh, like China, Mongolia kind of area. Yeah, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that yeah, I'm not either. If you know, please sh uh, shoot me on my uh, Instagram. Let me know, Reverend Marcus. Um, so that way it can get it right. <laughs> right. Or the Wandering Ways podcast, any of that, <laughs> whatever's easiest for you guys. Yeah, that too. That too. But. No, that Japan, yeah, and the cherry blossoms. All of it. Would be so cool. Yeah, there's a lot. Japan would be, Japan would be legit. Japan would be, and that's, that's a great one. That's a real good one. I'm not going to lie. That's a real good one. Number two for me. Um, and, and that's why, and, I, and, I, and the reason I think I ranked the, the, the one, two, three, because it's kind of a priority of how I do want to accomplish these things where it's like, no, I want Japan to happen in the next like five years. That's a five year, you know, my top three are, you know, five to 10 year trips because they're bigger trips. So you do got to plan for them, but, yeah. but they're, they're, they're happened sooner than later where, you know, the Maldives, I mean, Maldives five, I do want to, <laughs> they're all five year, five to 10 year trips. I want to make them all happen. Uh, you know, I want to go to Europe. I want to go to Russia. I want to go to South America. I want to go to Antarctica. That would be a big one. You know, I was looking at Antarctica Texas and to do cool. all yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh, that'd be. South... I want to go to Africa. Africa. I want to do it all. <laughs> Africa, Africa, was, Africa makes the top 10 and it's close to top five um, for me. It should be my top five. Um, I think the reason I'm not is because our guest YOLO that we had on back in December, he um, and I, you know, he's talked about bringing us out there and, and the fact that he's, he's from, you know, Uganda and beautiful area over there and wants to show us, you know, Mozambique and all those different cool places that, you know, 
I I didn't rank it in my top five because I think that's going it's he's going to get married and he's going to have it over there. So we're going to go there eventually. So it's not really a dream or wish list trip, you know, because it's like kind of kind of planned without. Yeah, I I've seriously thought about putting it on my my wish list. What held me back is. Um, I, f- I didn't want to get too international with my list. <laughs> oh, really? You're, you, I, I See, I did. Everything I chose is international. I know. And I, w- I could have very, very easily. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to try not to. Um, you know, we, we have some international lists. But to be honest, I mean, the Arctic Circle you can do and is you can do that stateside. Denali's obviously stateside. But Arctic Circle you can do Canada. Yeah. Um, you gotcha. know, Patagonia, you know, I still looking at my list, there's a lot of international on there. So, so, so my question then, is what is my number two? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> no, my number two is we're going international on this one. I absolutely, again, this is another obvious one. If you do actually have ever spent time around me and, uh, it probably never leaves my top two, to be honest. Um, and it is Iceland. Well, you know, and we're going to spoil my number one because that's what it is. And I think we could take a little extra time to talk about it because yeah. of this overlap. And you're right. Has it ever left our conversation with nature? No. <laughs> Since day one. <laughs> Iceland. It's not my number one. I have some, My number one is slightly different. And the reason why it's my number one is I also want to do something along with it. We'll get into that. Yeah, but back to Iceland, baby. Oh, my God. I tried making it happen when I went to Europe two two years ago. I was like, I was trying to figure out how I could squeeze everything that I was doing into Europe plus a couple of days in Iceland. But it just was, logistics was not working for me. And um, the party, the group I was with, like... It was a whole mess. So I was like, you know what? It's not happening this time. It will happen though. Oh, it, it's, I mean, I think when we, when we talk our international trips, Iceland is one of Wandering Ways podcasts. I mean, big, good Yeti possibilities, possibly. Um, we don't know. We haven't been there. We're going to go check it out. Um, but it's one of those Wandering Ways adventures we, 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 we've talked about we want to bring you. And we will bring it to you because you got the beautiful, beautiful black beaches. You have the just the size of Iceland is interesting where it is feasible to like make it one whole trip. It's geothermal, which geothermal is just cool in general. Hot springs, baby. Hot springs. And if you know us and you've been listening, we love our hot springs. Um, Yeah. I'm kind of upset when you came out for the bachelor party, we weren't able to do the hot springs. Um, but next time you're in Montana, we will hit some hot springs for sure. Cause we tried. Maybe to. we'll have to do the hot spring road trip. You know, and there, there's all sorts of different hot springs out here, which are awesome. Maybe we'll have to do that in Iceland. Hot spring road right. trip in Iceland. There done. Map it out. Let's go uh, on to and the no. next. No. <laughs> and the volcanoes, like they got some cool vol- yeah. volcanoes. Yeah. And the people are nice, you know, um, you know, we love it. We're going yeah, to do it. The scenery is amazing. The hot springs, there's canyons, rivers, uh, the beaches, you know, even the, the, the towns there, it kind of something I'd love to go and dive into a little bit uh, along with the, the more nature side of it. You know, it's just, it, Everything about Iceland just sounds like it would be a fun time to go check it out, um, experience it. Um, well, it's it's those cultural experiences that you're having present day when it's still considered pop culture because that's what's happening at the time. You know, we're, you know, I love coming into, you know, Deadwood, South Dakota and just being like, yeah, there's a reminder we come here to see the people that live here because the, it, there's that type of people everywhere on this world they're that type of people to someone right yeah so there's the differences in that like you come to billings you get that more rural rancher farmer type of vibe when you when you then go to bozeman which is two hours away in montana and you get that more yuppie guppy 
I'm a skier, I'm a snowboarder, but I'm, I'm a classy skier, snowboarder. Then you go over to Missoula and you get the more, you know, hippy dippy, you know, like <laughs> snowboarder, you know, the, you know, 420, you know, all that kind of yeah. vibe. And you're all in the same state, all under the same government. And just the differences you get there, but you go to like a Taos, New Mexico or a Santa Fe and an Albuquerque and you get those vibes and feels from those towns and even the small, large, doesn't matter where you're at they have that vibe and feel. And I think, like you said, even those towns in Iceland, you're going to get that Icelandic feel. Yeah, and you're going to take something away from it. You mm -hmm. are. Even if it's a, not a, a positive thing, you still can take away from it, and that's a learning experience, right? Whether you like it or you hate it, you still came out of it understanding it. So, you know, that's why I like to travel. One, I get to, reali I get to realize in my head that, one, we're all the same. We're all the same. People are people. People are trying to find a place to sleep. People are trying to find something to eat. And people are trying to find love, you know, and happiness, right? Yeah, happiness and love. Exactly. That's what it comes down to for the most part. But that's why I want to travel. But Iceland would be just absolutely amazing. Oh, and and I mean, honestly, we, it probably would have happened either last year or this year, depending on COVID. Cause it was, we were trying to plan it. You yeah. know, we, la I would say last year at this time, you know, when, when COVID was first hitting, you know, we we're kind of, when it was kind of still that like hoax, there was that hope that, Hey, maybe, maybe we still can, maybe we still can go and didn't happen. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. It's coming soon though, everybody. Exactly. I'm excited. Be excited. <laughs> well, that's my number one. You're number two. I'm interested to hear your number one because we didn't have any, like that was the only overlap. And it was so, I would argue on our lists, you know, your number, like you said, your number two, your number one, number three are interchangeable. So were mine. The fact that they lined up like that. I'm curious to hear your number one just because. Yeah. And so my number one is my number one because they have like a whole thing I really want to do with it. And, um, but it's, it's take my bike and go across the United States, hitting as many of the national parks as I can. And I want to do this <clears throat> trip and try and raise money fundraiser wise for either some sort of environmental thing or even the, possibly the National Park Services themselves. Um, but I want to do like a whole thing along the way, doing a bunch of video for um, explaining different environmental stuff. So there's a lot to the trip that makes, which is why I want to make it number one. Two, it would be amazing. I love getting on my bike and just going. So this would be just another added part to it, which would be incredible. So that's, incredible. That's incredible. A dream, that's a dream trip if I've ever heard one. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You know, I just get on, um, get camera going, uh, take some pictures, do a whole big, just trying to bring some awareness and environmental about environmental stuff because I think yes I know there's a lot of it out there but I don't think there can be enough because we still have a lot of people that don't truly understand it not exactly I like that I think that's cool there's a you know there's a lot of people who walk across the U.S. bike across the U.S. just for their own personal goals anyway so yeah I'm sure you could find something that you know where the trails meet up or what people have done you know already um i like that i think that's an awesome idea you know i'll drive the roo guru right alongside you you know i'll be your support team um yeah, we'll have you go and set up the camp huh <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll i'll go right ahead and set the camp up you know have dinner ready by the time you get up oh he should be here another two hours guys put put the snakes on there exactly <laughs> And we'll call it Wandering Across America. <laughs> With the Wandering Ways podcast, you know, we'll do we'll do nightly updates, you know. We'll, we'll have reports of like, hey, uh, you know, this is where Mark made it today. We're doing this. We're camping here. We're telling these stories. We're talking about this, you know. Uh, Matt Buddy will be invited, but he'll only be invited for segments at a time. You know, he'll 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 come fly down. Uh, you know, maybe do the New Mexico segment and then fly back to wherever he has to be. You know, because 
that's how he rolls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it will be a whole month long special on the podcast. I love it. Four yeah. episodes devoted just to that trip that will be recorded during that trip, but spread out for the week. Nah, dude, let's do where we record every day about what you do every day. We'll release it for a month straight. And that'll be the only month you get a daily podcast update. <laughs> I don't know. Email us and tell us what you want to hear uh, on our dream trips. And let's hear some of your dreams. Uh, yes. You know, I believe I, I would love to take, you know, one of the guests we've had on like Matt or Yolo or Sunny or Matt May or anyone else, you know, just say, hey, what are your dream top fives and why? Or one of you guys too. We want to. Oh hear yours. shit! You want to? You want to pull someone? You want to pull a fan and talk? I like that. Why not? You know, not? I I love it too. I mean, we got some great people. We, you know, if you follow us on the socials, which we have, you know, stuff. Quite a few of you do, which we really do appreciate. Thank you so much again. Um, we want to make this, you know, full time. Mark wants to go across America on a bike. That doesn't take a day. Take <laughs> big. <laughs> takes months you're gonna to have to you know pause your job or quit your job or something to do that summer summer okay well exactly you know but maybe let's make it so he does it full-time so we could you know spend more time with you guys um no i don't he loves what he does so i'm not gonna yeah. <laughs> push that too much yeah no there we go i want to do it i've thought about it i've done some small planning on it um nothing too big yet um, I'm still doing a lot of training because I want to run a triathlon, but that's a whole different, different thing, um, unrelated to the podcast. But anyways, I have to be the guy because I am always that guy. Uh, we're getting to the end of it. Um, it's been a doozy. I've really enjoyed this one. I have too. We're getting into the final words, my guy. So final words. Man, I really have to think because I really want to tie this back to us and accomplishing your dreams and goals and just everything you've done. You no, know? because I mean, I look at like uh, meeting you and the things we've accomplished in the last, you know, it's 2021. You know, I met you fall of 2013, but we really didn't start adventuring until 2015. You know, it's been six years of adventures and we've accomplished a lot in those six years. And we've accomplished some big trips, some little trips, some fun trips, some not so fun trips, some fights, some arguments, you know, all that along the way. And that's part of the fun, all that. And I think um, you can always achieve your dreams. You know, you're, you're the only one holding you back. You know, yeah, you may have an addiction or a disease or an issue or a problem, but remember all those things can be overcome because people have overcome them. Um, you know, it's, it's your crutch or your excuse and, and, and you have to own that and realize it and understand it for it to be true and for you to actually overcome your obstacles. And once you overcome your obstacles, your dreams are reachable you can make it happen. You know, you can plan, you can think ahead. Um, and that's part of it, you know, engage brain and think, you know, think about the A, B, C, D, and E outcomes of anything you do, right? Because that's going to give you a better pic picture and it help you plan better. You know, you know, when we're planning a trip, we, we look at those outcomes, you know, Hey, if this road ain't open, what are we doing? Hey, if this path is full, what are we doing? If this thing is blocked, what are we doing? And um, that's that's part of planning. That's also being able to go on the fly. You know, we have friends that they can't plan without knowing everything head to toe. And that's okay. I get that. You guys are out there. And, you know, you just got to do the best thing you can do because nothing ever goes as planned. You know, <laughs> That's what happens to us all the time. You know, nothing goes as planned. We want to go to awesome places and, you know, well, let's go to Iceland. Well, COVID happened. Oh, we want to hike this in Glacier. Well, that's too much snow. Um, we want to go see this. Oh, grizzly bears can't go, you know. So figure it out, plan, and you can reach those dreams. You know, yes, you may be like, that's too hard, Zach. I can't. I'm trying. You know, I'm doing everything I can, you know. Basically, what I do is I put pen to paper, I get the pen out, I click, I write down, uh, and I, I figure it out. I do the math. I, you know, budget. I, hey, 
I'm, I've been eating cup of noodle soup for the last two months so I can buy a house to help, you know, so I'm not spending that five to $10 on a lunch. So it's, it's helping. True. It's kind of a long one. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> hey, 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 no, no issues. There's final words, whatever you want. It's whatever you want. That's what makes our final words so special. Um, Reverend's final words, wisdom. Stay beautiful, everyone. Um, you guys are truly amazing. And I am blessed that we have such an amazing base, such an amazing set of wanderers out there with us. Um, couldn't ask to wander this world with anybody else other than our lovely wanderers. Uh, but, you know, get out, get active, be amazing as you guys always are. Um, you know, smile. Well, it's hard with masks right now. That's true. If you can, though, smile at someone, say hello to someone um, that's a stranger because you don't know that could make the difference in someone's day. Um, it could save a life even though you had no idea who that person was just saying hello could definitely change that person's life. So I try to do it, say hello to strangers, smile. It's, it's incredible what happens uh, when you do that kind of thing. Um, but that being said, peace out everybody.